Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours, where I upload videos of live Zoom creative workshops from my Healing Art Happy Hour meetups. I'm Shauna Robeson from Creating Space Coastal, and in today's video, I will demonstrate a variety of quick and easy seasonal greeting card ideas. Handouts for the introduction to this topic are available for download at my shop at creatingspacecoastal.com. And as always, happy creating! All right, so we're talking about greeting cards. And last time I, I showed you, a, you know, a template, I showed you how to turn any of your art into a greeting card, whether you wanted to do it through your phone by taking a picture of it and adding, adding words to it, or by scanning it in and printing it on paper. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit more about just other, other quick ideas um, where you can make each one instead of taking one piece of art and creating multiples with that art you can just make them individually but still try to keep the time down a little bit because if you're making a lot of greeting cards uh it, it can take a lot of time it's a it's a lot of commitment so so i'm going to start from really basic easy ideas and then move into just more more complex more embellishments and that sort of thing. So the first thing I want to mention is the paper that I'm using, the cardstock is Classic Crest Cover Solar White by Nina, Nina Classic Crest, and it's 80 pounds. So just so you can see what I'm working with. Um, and this is, the, and I, and it's smooth, which I like, and it works pretty well for many of the projects that I like to do. So that's, that's my go-to paper that I typically am using. So anytime you see me using cardstock, that's what you're saying. Okay. Now for those of us who are the, I'm not an artist type and, and you know, maybe get intimidated by any kind of art, next month is color is going to be coloring theme, but I thought I would share some tips of creating cards with just using color pages or coloring. So this is an example of one that I printed off using my template. I just used the, I've searched for a coloring page online and I was able to cut and paste the, the image from an online search onto my template that I showed last week and create a card. So when I fold it over, it's gonna be let it snow inside. And then I also left a little bit of room for a greeting or stamp. I can I can write something or stamp something on the outside if I want to. And then all I have to do is color that. And I can just do a simple, add a little bit of color, touch it up, and it's ready to go. And I found another image. So, so with one sheet of cardstock, I was able to make two cards, basically using the template. And um, let me see if I have... I can make it fairly easy to do. Okay, so you can see, you can see the screen. Can you guys see my files? Okay. <laughs> These are some examples of greeting cards, but I wanted to show you what the template looked like. So this is basically what the template looks like. There's a space here for an image. There's two images. This one is for a portrait uh, orientation. Let me move this over. So it's a Word document that I created and I have online uh, on my notes, I have templates, one for the portrait and one for landscape. It looks wonky because I'm just looking at a preview of the file. It's not the actual file, but I basically created a word, um, what is it called? A table. I created a table in Word and I just created it the size that I wanted it to fit all of the pieces of the card that I want. So I could just plug it in and then print and it's good to go. Here's an example. And this is showing the grid lines. You can put the image there and then write your sentiment where it shows. So those are just a little preview of this, of the, you know, of the template. You know, you can make anything if you draw it. So someone gave me a free TV. And so I just created this thank you card just with, just with uh, Sharpies. And, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy, but 
just really any any idea um, you can come up with and, and draw anything to create a card. So just a, a, you know, I have a gazillion examples of different cards that were made, but I'm not going to go into all of all of those here. But I just wanted to show you for those of you who weren't here last time that you can use that template and that'll help you if you want to make any art, turn any art into a physical greeting card. Now, if you do the color pages, just be aware that if you do it on an ink print, uh, inkjet printer, that ink typically may not be indelible, meaning that it's water soluble. So if you're using a wet medium to color, if you're not using colored pencils, let's say you're using maybe a little, doing a little watercolor markers or something like that, just be aware that it could smear. So don't make it too wet if you're using that ink. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate by using, doing the mark, like a marker watercolor technique with this one. But this is a laser printer, so it is not, it is not water soluble. It is indelible ink. Now this little image, it's funny because I searched winter penguins and turns out I actually have the rubber stamp of that image. And I found that image online as a color page. So I've made a lot of cards with my rubber stamps. So if you have rubber stamps, that's another way you can create a quick card. You just do a stamp and then you color it. And there's your, there's your greeting card. And then another way to make it quick, uh, to, to embellish your cards quickly, whether you use your own art or not, is to use uh, just any kind of sentiment stamp. So you don't have to have a ton of different options. You can just have seasons, greetings, or something simple. This is peaceful wishes. It's pretty generic. So um, I can add it to pretty much any project. So even just with a couple, um, couple stamps and I use, if I'm gonna do any coloring and it's wet, I use indelible ink for my stamping too. And this is one of my favorites, this Ranger archival ink and it's jet black. So um, just giving you, I'm just gonna try to give you lots of different ideas uh, for where you can go with, with card making without trying to overwhelm you. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. <laughs> so. Whether you stamp it or print it, uh, here's just a, it, I mean, it took me five minutes, if that, less than five minutes to search it online and then, and then print it on the cardstock that I just showed you. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of coloring and voila. And in this case, I think I'm gonna do it with, using the watercolor marker technique. So I'm just using really, you know, cheap markers. This is probably, uh, well, equivalent to like a, well, less than equivalent to a Crayola marker. So it's just a generic, really doesn't have any kind of brand name. It's fiber color. I've had it for probably 10 years. And I'm just going to put some of that color in Oh, well, you can use any kind of plastic surface that you want. And that looks a little bit, I feel like the red is not so vibrant. Oh. It looks like that's more orange to me, but oh well, it's gonna be orange because I don't even see a more something more red. So we're just gonna go with orange. Let's see. Maybe I'll add, I have some blue in my palette. This is just from before I put it in there, it's already dry. And then, and then I have some green. So that's a good start. And then I'm going to take my aqua pen or brush pen or whatever you wanna call it because there's several names that it goes by, but it's basically a brush tip with, that's loaded with water. And next month I'm gonna be doing more coloring. So I'll be going over more of the details of the technique, but I just wanted to give you a little example of how quick and easy this process could be. Okay. So I squeezed it until the brush was moist. 
And then I'm just going to put it down where I want the most concentration. And then I'm going to move the pigment along and it gives it a nice gradient of color. So wherever I want the shadow to be is where I'm going to start. I want the dark side. Maybe a little closer. And then it just automatically, the pigment is diluted as it goes out. So it creates a nice watercolor like gradient. So you're just using all whatever kind of markers and then using the water tip to make it into sort of a exactly. watercolor experiment. Exactly. That's so cool. It looks so cool. I love and, it. and it's just be aware that this is a water soluble marker. So you couldn't do this with a, with a Sharpie. A Sharpie is more of an, I think it's alcohol based. So just you, you have to use it with a water based um, marker. So just mm. uh, highlight that. But yeah, it's just an easy way to, and on this cardstock, this cardstock can't handle a lot of moisture. So, but this doesn't use a lot. This technique just uses, you know, such a little amount of water. It's not going to get all, you know, um, warped. If I was using it on that really thin coloring book, sometimes I do get warping with that. Um, if I, you know, use if I'm doing a bigger area, you know, sometimes it gets too wet, but it's not that much wetter than if I was just using a marker. But I like the tech, I like the look of it better than a marker because I can get these, this nice gradient of color where if I'm using a marker, unless I have like a blending tool or something to lighten it up, it's just going to be really um, monochromatic. It's just, it's, or I don't know if that's the, the right word, but it's going to be the same all the way around. And this allows me to kind of play with it a little bit. So I like the look that I get with this. And it's similar to what you might get using alcohol markers, where you actually do use three colors to get those different tones. But you can get some really, you know, really good color combinations with that. So um, make sure that between colors, you, you know, oh, you're not seeing what I'm doing. You just basically squeeze and put, you have a little rag or, or paper or something that you make sure there's no more pigment coming off or else it'll mix your pigment colors. All right. So now this guy, I think I'm going to do in greens. So I'm going to just tap into my, and again, this has been sitting, the screen has been sitting in here for a week. It's water soluble. So as soon as I touch it, it just starts to, to soften up. And I'm gonna try to keep those little dots white. We'll see. Shana, what's the website that you got some of these cute little characters? I'm looking, trying to find some, and I'm finding all colorful ones, ones that I don't want. Okay, just... yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Let me show you um, exactly where I found Thank it. Because I stayed the website because I figured you knew that. I would ask. I knew, yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> you got my, <laughs> you got my text. <laughs> okay, so. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna just move this. I'm gonna just move the website over so that it's on where the sharing screen is. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So I basically 
Let me get the search in the. I put the. I want you guys to see what I searched. I searched adult coloring pages. And of course, it's not going to pop up. Me. <laughs> Why is it way over there? Oh, there we go. Okay. I searched adult color pages. And this is actually from another book that I have. I have this, I've colored this actually. <laughs> so <laughs> then I might add color pages, winter, winter. Let's just search winter. And all these really cool little winter images come up that you can color. Or maybe you want to draw your own version of it, but it'll give you ideas of things to do, whether you want to just color or whether you want to, to draw yourself. So, and then I wanted penguins, so I can add also penguins. And then it'll show me a variety of winter penguins. You just keep adding the words you're looking for. Sometimes it's just helpful for someone else to do that because I, I did Christmas and then I was getting all these fancy diff color decoration things and I said, this isn't what I want. <laughs> so yeah, so be really specific with your search. If you want to do, you know, snowmen, if you want to do trees, because yeah, there's a gazillion you can search through. If you want it to be winter themed, like here's the one that is that stamp that I have. So all I did was right click on it and it said copy image. And then I put it on my card. And it and and some of them do have like a little copy, like they might say what it's from, and I'll just leave that on there for their so they get credit. But you know, they're designed to be printed and, and colored if they if you say color pages typically. So um, you can also, if you don't want the, maybe the credits on there, there's a little trick that I, that I do. I wanna use it. Now, obviously if you're making money from me, you know, you have to be careful with co copyright rules, but if you're doing it for just a to card for a friend, you know, you're not gonna have problems. But um, if, you can, if you hit the, if you're on a Windows, now I don't know how this works on Mac, but on, on Windows, if you hit the, the little Windows button that looks like a Windows, and then you hit Shift and S, Control Shift S, you'll see the screen go dark and this little, this little plus sign comes up. That means whatever I, right now, if, if I push the, the, the left mouse button, it'll start cutting whatever it is that I want. So if I, I'm putting it where I wanna start, and then it's going to create a box and I'm just dragging it diagonally. I can make it where, however big or small I want. And then once I release it, it basically cuts that image and makes it. And at that point I could just paste it right onto a word document. Then on the word document, I can make it any size I want. So if, if you have a problem with getting it this way, where you just say copy image, or maybe the image size is, you know, too big or whatever, or they're just, maybe you don't want the whole image. That's one way that you can do it with anything on your screen. Anything that shows up on your screen, you can use that snipping tool to select that image. So here for this, for example, I'm gonna do the same thing, Control, or I'm sorry, Windows Shift S for snipping tool. And let's say I don't want this part here. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna just bring it over here and I'm gonna get rid of that piece right there. Or maybe I don't even want that penguin. Maybe I want just these two penguins. So you can you know, choose whatever you want and then release and that's automatically copied, copied over here. It shows up over in my, my little side. So it's saved to the clipboard. You can hit paste into your Word document right away. So just a little tip for if you wanna do any of the printing. Any questions about that? And you printed those, like you said last time, right on your cards right away so that you had to make sure you, the way you had them all set up in your printer. 
Right. So I have that template that allows me to know where to place them on the Word document. You can eyeball it. I mean, you can say, okay, I know once I fold this sheet of paper, it's going to be this big. I just did all that work for you on the template, but you can do it yourself. It's just easier for me to go back and go, okay, if it fits in here, it's going to fit on my four and a quarter by, you know, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. Cause I know that that's half of the eight and a half by 11 that makes two. So I know the dimensions, I, that's what the template just helps me take less time doing it. But I could just put this on a Word document, kind of eyeball where I want it, print it off, make a card that way too. Gotcha, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let me move this guy back out of the way. Thank you for asking the question because if you're thinking of it, then there's probably other people thinking of it too. <laughs> so it's always it's always good to ask. So I appreciate that. Okay, I think I'm gonna make their little. Okay, um, I got his green. Maybe I'm gonna do a little darker green too on his little hat. So I'm just gonna pick darker green. I'm just gonna up there and you can see this doesn't take a lot of marker ink either so you know it's it's economical <laughs> have little little dots just make sure not to have too much water on it and maybe i'll go ahead and Now, also be aware of, depending on the paper you're using, this is a very smooth paper. And so what that means is it, it's not as porous and it doesn't bleed as much as some other papers. If you're using just a standard printing paper and you do this technique with the water, you might see a lot more bleeding of the ink. So just be aware of that. It's, you still might get a perfectly fine you know, might work perfectly fine, but you just may not stay quite in the lines as well. Just keep it drier. Okay, I'm going to make their use this for their little feet. But you can see, like, you know, that took, I mean, I, I did a little break and, but if I was just focusing on this and not talking, this would take no time at all. And one card out of the way onto the next card and you can kind of customize them maybe you know your friend's favorite colors or whatever you know so you could you could kind of you could customize each one if you wanted that's not the color i like Let's see what color this is it's a little gray i want to get a little bit of the snow maybe up a little. a little too bright you should try doing their shadows too oh yeah you could add sure you could put some maybe on the side let's see i'll try some shadows i don't have a lot of a lot of ground to work with but i can try to make this this is so just some gray so i'm gonna um Imagine. Maybe the light's coming that way. Although I had the shadow over here, so maybe not. <laughs> it's coming from behind them at an angle. So yeah, you could you could even bring it down, like if you wanted to make it look like the lights kind of coming from the back you could sort of give a little bit of a shadow like that is that what you're talking about yep so just a little fun quick and easy. 
And the thing is, sometimes less is more. I know that this is a color page and we we're, we have a tendency to want to color everything, but you don't have to. These are these are white. Maybe I want to make some, oops, that's blue. I want some gray. Maybe I want to make a little def, definition, but sometimes just knowing when to stop, like you don't have to uh, color every scratch. Sometimes just adding a little bit of color is enough. So. I'm gonna create a little bit of a shadow on this side. So even though it's white, it's not stark white. And then on this side too, cause it's round and as it's going around, so that gives it a little bit of like dimension. The brightness is over here. And then as it recedes, it gets a little bit shadowy. have different light sources. So. <laughs> but this kind of gives it a little more dimension. It says, oh, yeah, we still know that's white, but it just, and even the stamp has a suggestion of that. It has these little shadow lines to show that you would have some, maybe some dark shadows there. So. It'll help you all. All right. Oh, their beaks. Do you want to get their beaks? All right. Then I could add little stamp. One little tip, if you are a stamper and you don't know this tip, because if you're a stamper, you might already know it. But if you use a little piece of, um, it's kind of like a, like a foam, it's not felt, it's more like foam. It's for crafting and you can buy it. You can buy sheets of it at any crafting store. Um, but if you stamp on top of that, it gives it a little bit of a cushion. And sometimes that gives you a better stamp. You have to be careful not to push too far because then sometimes what happens if you get too much ink on your stamp you and you tilt it, you have to be careful not to tilt. A lot of people want to rock and roll. What happens is you touch the edge of that stamp and then you get, you get ink where you don't want it. And I, I already did that earlier. <laughs> Because when I'm putting it on this the stamp pad, I rock, I kind of rock and roll it. But really, you just you can wiggle it and pat. You don't have to rock and roll because when you rock and roll, you get that. So try to get out of that habit. I'm still, I still work have work to do on that. But all right. Now before I do this, I want to know exactly where my seam is. And this is another little tool that is nice to have. I don't have any kind of line or anything that shows me where the middle of my card is. So I could do, I could fold it if I don't have anything. You can just fold it in half and then press it down. And that's perfectly fine. But this also is handy. It helps just give a little cleaner line because sometimes when you do that, it doesn't always fold where you want to. So I have it marked at the A2, which is size four and a quarter, because the full length of this is eight and a half. It's an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So it's four and a quarter is the half. So I just press down and run this bone tool along this groove and it embosses it. So now I don't know if you can see, see that embossing. So that will make it much easier when you fold it to get a nice crease and it makes it straight. So just another little gadget. Um, but before I fold it, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it. But now I know where my line is, so I can eyeball the center. I just want, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm going to say, okay, I want it kind of in between this edge and this edge. And this may or may not be perfect. More likely not. I'm going to press straight down and not wiggle it and just push into the foam. And lift straight up. 
Oh, and I still, I still created a line and I didn't even, I just pushed too hard on the phone. So this is what you get. Now you guys can see, <laughs> I'm not lying. See that line there that I don't want. So if that happens, here's a little, another way to deal with it. Ribbon. That'll be cute. Okay, so another little embellishment. You can add as much or as little embellishments as you want. But when I make mistakes like that, I actually did the same thing over here. <laughs> so it's better to wipe it off if you get it on those edges, you know, because it's it can happen even when you're really careful. And I thought I was being really careful, but all right, I'm just gonna trim the ribbon. And with this ink, it dries pretty quickly, but just be careful when you're using, when you're stamping, not to run your fingers over the words too quickly because it could smear. And that's always the worst when you've worked so hard on something. Uh, but you can always, if something like that happens, the other thing you can do is get a new piece of paper, put the sentiment on that, and then stick it on separately. So that's another way to fix anything that happens with this, you know, in the final steps. There's always a way out. <laughs> All right. For those of you who are serious crafters, this is a this is basically a glue gun. And it's kind of like those little glue runners that you get. So if you're doing a lot all, all the time, this is a great tool. But it's overkill if you do, you know, once a year you make a cart. So but that's basically what it is, is I don't have the little ones. I have the, the giant one. And I'm gonna put the ink or the, the tape adhesive right onto the ribbon. And now I made sure that the ribbon was a little bit bigger than the project because I want to trim it to size. So it's hanging off on either side. That's how I want it. And then I can go in and trim. Just make sure not to cut the cut. Has a little adhesive on it, so it's a little trickier to. Mm -hmm. But it, it'll happen. Okay, now I can leave it like that. Or I can even take more of the same and I can make a little bow if I want to. This is kind of big ribbon, so I don't know if I want to make a bow out of it. We'll see. Yeah, I don't really like that. So I can I think it's too big for this project. So as an alternative, I could also, where did it go? Oh, here we go. I have a little, I have a little ribbon. And I could make a bow out of that.
color looks a little bit different, but it's black, but it looks almost like a green black. I don't think it'll be noticeable, but I can just make a little bow and stick it on there like that. These are little glue dots, which come in handy for embellishments. They're little round sticky adhesive. Like you get things in the mail that, you know, like credit cards and things it's similar to that where it's kind of sticky. And then that's, that works great for these kinds of embellishments. Glue dots. But you can work with, you know, other types of glue. The wet glues, don't dry as quickly. And so sometimes that can be frustrating because things get moved. Okay, so there we go. There's a one card. Now, if I wasn't talking and doing lots of demonstrations, this would, you know, not take me quite as long. But you can see that's fairly, fairly easy to do. Okay. So that's coloring. Then the next, I'm trying to go from, from easy to more challenging. <laughs> Next thing I want to do is just drawing on the card itself. And you can either draw on just a piece of cardstock that you could mount. I'm going to actually demonstrate, I'm going to show you a bunch of different cards right now and show you, um, and then I'll, dem I'll be demonstrating some, but I want to show you the different idea, different levels. So this is just, you can draw right on a card. It's one dimensional. There's there's no nothing elevated or no embellishments, just really simple, just ink and paper. Same with this one. And then you could add a little bit of color. This is this is more like the Zen Tangle or the Tangle Art. This is more like the neurographic that we've been working on. So you could just make a squiggly and then add a little bit of color. This is with colored pencils and gel pens. So you can add even more color. Another easy way to do it if you're not into drawing is to use a stencil. You can use, you know, holiday stencils or whatever theme you're working on. You can apply to any theme. So in this case, I use the, the stocking. And then I did like a, a Zen tangle like we talked about. And I'll show you some links where you can get these patterns, but basically you just divide up whatever, whatever shape it is into segments, just like you do with the Zen tangle, and then make these patterns in each of the segments. And then this is the same kind of thing where I just created some, some balls and created some different simple patterns on those. And this is pretty easy as well. But these are all one dimensional. There's nothing, nothing glued on or anything like that. It's all just the pen. Then the next level is to, if you draw something on a smaller piece of paper. Now in this case, I didn't mount it on black. You can either mount it on a black piece of paper, but if you don't have that, what I did here is I took a Sharpie and I just created a straight line across the edge as a, as a frame. So it looks like it's mounted on black, but it's not. And I just hand drew the lettering and everything. So this is again, another kind of a tangle, tangle art variation with a little bit of dimension. Now, if you have decorative papers, which you can also get at craft stores, like this, for example, comes just like this and inside is white. So I have it left over from previous years. So I did some tangle, the tangle snowman. I, I did the, the black around the edge with the Sharpie, like I did on the other one. And that just creates a nice frame around it. Um, I, I think it looks nicer when you have some kind of matting like that against the background. And then I added uh, a bow to, to give it a little dimension. And I also used the dimensional tapes. Now, um not remembering who mentioned that last time the difficulty with some of the dimensional tape 
And what I mean by two-dimensional tape is it's this foam tape, but this is not a real th thick variation. There are a variety of thicknesses that you can get. And just be aware that sometimes mailing things with any with the bows or you know any thickness could be a challenge. So just be aware of what the rules are in your region as to that. Or just the ones that are maybe bulkier bring to if you're going to you know deliver by hand. So this one I did you know like I said a tangle art I added a little bow. I just hand wrote a greeting below with the contrasting my white gel pen. Now my penmanship is not my strong suit. <laughs> so I like stamps, but I wanted to show you an alternative example. Even if you don't have the greatest penmanship, you can still, I mean, I think it still looks okay. You know, I'm gonna criticize it more than anybody else who gets it. Nobody's gonna go, oh my gosh, that, that W is kind of crooked. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, a handmade card. So this one's just glued with the, the strip glue onto the colored paper. And then this one's used that uses the dimensionals. And then another step up from that, this one I drew again, I just used the black around the edge, but then I added some little stickles, which is glitter glue. So you can, of course, take this to every level, any level you want. And I wanted to keep it to base the basics. Um, but I wanted to show you some some common ideas that you, you might even have these things around the house. If you have glitter, you can just use it with Elmer's glue and glitter as well. But it just gives it a little bit more, you know, some fun, fun embellishment when you add that. So it's very festive. And this was where I had, had that line and I had to cover it with the bow. So <laughs> if you see bows on the cards, it's probably a boo boo. <laughs> and that's okay. Okay, I think I covered some like most of the basics. This is another example of some just pre colored card stuff. These are sold with envelopes and everything. So you can find these at craft stores if you want a little something for your background. Or you can embellish your background. And I'll, I think I'll show that more next time how to embellish the background without using colored paper. Okay. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, since we're talking about ribbon, and that's something you might already have in your archives, but you might also have some fun yarn. So you can also use that. For example, if I did a holiday tree or something, I could glue this on as, you know, along the tree and make it look like decoration on you know, like tinsel or something like that on the tree. So play around with things you have in your house that are low profile. You don't want it to be too thick because you want to be able to go through the mail, but you can have fun with things in your house. Okay, so that's just a little tour of some things that I've, that I've made. And now I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate some of them. And I think because this one, it's eight o'clock. Okay, this one doesn't have a lot of drawing. So this one, I think, even though it has a lot of different things, it's fairly easy to do. So I think I'll maybe start with that. Uh, actually, no, let me start with this one first. This one's really easy. Now, if you use a card and something goes wrong, you can always trim it down, use the page and do it, do something on the back side, and then, you know, use it as a smaller piece. So, sometimes I get a little intimidated by using a card. It's like, oh, if I mess it up, I've wasted a whole card, but that's not true. You can use the back, you can trim it, trim both sides, and then just use them as separate projects. So that way you can just go ahead and color right on there. All right. I'm just going to use, in that case, I think I used, I'm not sure what size marker I used on this one to do my swirls, but I'm going to go ahead and do it with, because this is a more common one that you might find around your house. This is the extra fine Sharpie. So I'm just going to use that for this example. And basically you just start anywhere and just go kind of anywhere and generally a shape of a tree. 
So that just gets more narrow as it goes up. And then, so I'm starting to run out of ink. And then, um, then I just add some balls wherever it needs something like right here, maybe. So very much inspired by the Neurographica, for those of you who were here for that month. In this case, I use the fine liner marker just to do my red because it's a little bit easier to control. So it's very, you know, fine tip. Let's see, it's a, these are the Statler Tri Plus fine liners. But you could use a bigger marker, just be, you know, just, it's just a trickier in the smaller space. So now I like to leave a little white space to look like it's glass, so it's light reflection. So I just draw that in and then I color in around it to wherever I want that. I kind of want it generally in the same area because I'm gonna imagine that the light source is coming from the same the same direction so just create Voila. Then after I did the red, I went ahead. In this case, I would probably use a finer tip to do the connections, like if you want to do it neurographic way, but you can leave it just like that too. But the neurographic way is just to fill in anything that's a sharp corner, you just turn it from a V into more like a U. I missed one there. Oh, there's another one. So just filling, smoothing out all these connections for those of you who weren't here for that month. You just soften anywhere lines cross each other. They usually create an X, which creates basically four V's. And you just go in and smooth them all out at each connection. That, and then you get this look here. But again, you can just leave it open like that. And look how quick that was. Okay. So, and this one, let's just do this guy. Time goes by so quickly. <laughs> Now in this case, I have, I use a smaller a smaller piece of paper that I trim down that I glue it on. And I think I need to trim. I need to trim something. So let me. I'll be right back. Let me just trim. So. Trim. 
turn it down. I thought I had some already cut, but I'm not seeing them. I think this one is so three and a half by three and a half. Okay. I have several trimmers, but this is an example of a paper trimmer. This one actually has an embossing. So to create that crease on the card, this, this is what this blade is for. It's not actually sharp. So this actually does both of those. Um, it cuts and it creases. <clears throat> Uh, this one's already too short. Outside. All right, and this takes some drying, but not not like a lot, you know, not like really complex drawing. You could use your compass to make circles if you wanted, but I just basically make the sides kind of where I want them. And then I make the the, top, the next one a little bit narrower. And I want a hat. This one's getting dry. Says size one of the mic on. Just kind of big. I'm making them like cold, so I'm not making them go round. <laughs>
Make a bow on him. And this is where it does help to have these different sizes. This is an 08, this is an 05. I use the whole range from 005 to one. And there's even a brush tip I use sometimes. Because you want to use just big enough for the project so you can get the details that you're looking for. And But you don't want it to take a lot of brush strokes either. So you want it to be you know, just the right size. If it's too small, it just takes too long to fill it in. And then you sometimes don't get a solid blackness. You get, you can see the pen strokes, but if it's too thick, it's hard to stay in those detailed lines. So. This is a great filler pattern for any tangle art. It's easy. And you can fill as big a space as you need to with it. So it's one of my go-to patterns. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about where to find patterns. I'll show you a website that I go to. For those of you who weren't here during Tangle Art Month, I actually have a coloring book of Tangle Art. Nice. Now you can make your own and then color it. <laughs> it's actually a coloring book. Yeah, yeah. No, I've seen um, I've seen also mandala coloring books too. There's some really there's some really fun ones out there. So and next month I'll be talking about coloring, but yeah, that's a good way to also learn about drawing tangle type art is by starting with coloring them. On a but, snowman, it looks like ribs. What it does it be? A jacket or it's, ribs? <laughs> well, you know what, what I kind of thought about, I, you know, it wasn't supposed to be anything specific. It was just a pattern, but um, it does kind of look like ribs. And it made me think of like the Nightmare Before Christmas style. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I just went with it. Okay. <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. And you don't have, like I said, you don't have to follow along. I might put a vest on and entangle a vest. Yes. And actually I'll, the, I did that on one of them. Let me. Let me pull that one back up. Yeah, if you don't want it to look like maybe for Christmas or Dia de los Muertos, then 
<laughs> I'm like, maybe it's just because we just got done with Dia, Dia de los Muertos here in, in Mexico. But this guy, I put a vest on. Now this one's really busy. I probably wouldn't do it like this again. I'd probably have the snowman plane and then do the tangle background, or I do the background more plain and have a tangled snowman because I think it's really too busy and they compete with each other. Um, but I mean, it's still fun. I think with some more color, I might add some more color that might that might uh, highlight the snowman a little bit more because right now he kind of gets, it's like, where's Waldo? So I don't want it to be like that. <laughs> but yeah, I did a vest on him. So I didn't put, I think I want to put a little bow on him too. I didn't put a scarf. I could put, I could use a ribbon to make a scarf or I could even use the, the fiber. Like this would be a cool, a cool scarf that I, you could, you know, actually maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make that a scarf. We'll see. Okay. So we'll see what I, have, what I have time for. And then all I did was I highlighted a few things with red. And then I added, I'm going to do the, the glitter last because you have to really let that dry. So just be aware that don't put that until the very end because otherwise you stick your hand in. Trust me. Been there, done that. Okay. Now this can be a little tricky, but basically you want some paper underneath. And then I just go along the edge. The first thing I do is go along the side edge and just blacken it. So I don't want any of that white showing up. I want to really frame it. And then try to do it from holding it the back side because if I miss it, if I miss the side and I accidentally mark it, I'm marking the back of the picture, not the front. So go towards the back of the picture when doing this part. Because I've done that too. <laughs> That's how we learn by doing or seeing other people do it. See, just like that. Okay, now what I could do, and maybe this is what I should recommend. You could mark the edge of the paper where you want it. I just did an eye by eyeball, but you know what? I'm gonna suggest doing this because it's just easy to make a mistake. So just really you wanna mark just the very, very edge of the paper. So just use a ruler and it's safer, trust me. <laughs> I was too lazy to get up to get my ruler. So I just did it by eyeing, eyeing it, but it's easy to make a mistake. So The, the edge was way anyway. It doesn't matter that part of your image is in the frame. That's okay. You can think about that when you're drawing, like where you want to draw it. But I like the frame. I think it gives it a more finished, 
more polished look. Again, you can just use matting underneath. But for those of you who don't have black paper lying around, or red paper would look really nice with this project too. That's a cheap solution. <laughs> okay, so there's my frame. In this case, I use the dimensional tapes. I'm cheap, so I cut them in half a lot of times. <laughs> Because they're pretty big. I put a big one in the center, though. So every corner in the center, minimum. And I'm going to, I'm going to get a baby wipe to just wipe off that extra ink so that I don't keep laying in line and have to use. Okay. Always good to stand above your project looking down to make sure you're getting straight down, centered, because if you look at it from the side, Ta-da, I did it. I knew it was possible. Okay, so this one, I could choose to put a ribbon if I want, but actually what I wanna do for this one is not put a ribbon there. I wanna put a little, I'm gonna use some of this green fiber for a, for a fun scarf if I can find the end of it. <laughs> I don't knit. Um, but sometimes at thrift stores and things like that, they sell bags of crafts and you can find fun embellishment type stuff. You can find glitter, you can find rubber stamps. Um, that should be big enough. So you can buy usually a whole bag of crafty things for pretty reasonable. It could turn out to be good embellishments. Let's 
So I'm trying to I'm going to try to want it to look like it's tied there. Okay. No, I'm just trying to get the knot in the right spot. So this is going to be together. And then there's the knot. In this case, I think it all makes sense to use. I'm going to use some liquid tape or liquid adhesive so I can control it a little better. So let me go grab that other area. <laughs> I have some everywhere. I also want I'm going to get a toothpick so I can use that to control the glue better. Okay. This is one of my favorite liquid adhesive. This is the Tombow uh, Mono Multi Liquid Glue. And it has two different types of tips on it. It's got a big like wedge, which I don't really use, but that's for bigger projects, but it's got a pretty fine tip on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is put the glue here because I want to really control where it goes. So I'm going to use my toothpick. I think I can do this without making a mess. We'll see. Okay. And I kind of want I want this to this loop to stick together. I'm hoping if I pop it in there. The glue. There we go. And then it always dries clear. But if I want the the little fibers to to stay in a certain spot, I can kind of put them where I want them with the glue as well. So see, I want that piece to stay there. I don't want this to be flowing in the wind. Something like that. I don't know if you can 
appreciate it. Maybe it's maybe I like the bow better. But anyway, that was an experiment. So just another way you can play with embellishments. And then now that I have everything else done, I can use the sparkly glue. And this is a good, this is the popular one, Stickles. I don't know if it's still around. I've had this for quite a while. Uh, and it's still, not, it's not dried up. So. so everywhere I put the red, I'm just gonna put a little blob of sparkle. Except, uh, maybe not there. <laughs> And then I want some on his buttons. So you could get like a basic, like silver, gold, green, red, if, you know, if you're doing holiday colors and blue. I would say blue for winter, blue, silver, and gold, red, and green or just even gold and silver just to embellish but you don't have to have every single color that's out there okay so there's that one um and let's see what time we are at 8 35 so perfect timing i'm going to go ahead and pause the video thank you so much for watching this episode of healing art after hours you can download materials related to this topic, including PDF notes of PowerPoint presentations at creatingspacecoastal.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you found this content helpful, and join me for the next video here at my Creating Space Coastal channel, where I hope to inspire you to create space in your life for fun. Thank you.